So it, I'm not so much talking about, um, I, I more want to talk about, I get a lot of questions of uh, why does Google do it this way? Why can't we use this standard? Why can't we use Redfish? So I really want to talk about, um, about why that is, how, how it came about and why we have to do things a little bit differently. Um, so I, I'm going to talk about kind of the, the history of um, management controllers uh, within Google, some of the infrastructure that it has to interact with. Um, and I also talk about, uh, you know, it, about well, where we're kind of hoping to go with this. So, uh, you know, at first there were, there were none. There were no management controllers. Um, many, many years ago, uh, it, was, it, it wasn't cost effective for Google to run um, its own management network. So instead, um, we stole a small portion, took a small portion of the host's resources and uh, used the existing network uh, for the management functions. Um, and because the, uh, because the management traffic is going over an existing network um, and, and sharing it with production, we have to keep the management traffic s as small as possible. So we use a, a custom protocol for that. Um, and we built up, uh, so on top of that, we built uh, a very uh, effective and uh, efficient um, at scale um, and automated um, management system. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, and then after a couple of generations, um, we introduced a very uh, small footprint, low power uh, microcontroller um, that was running a, uh, a custom uh, bare bones OS um, to offload some of those management functions uh, from, from the host. Um, so, some, uh, so for example, the, uh, it, it uh, provided um, in-band uh, telemetry, so the power readings, thermal readings, um, and also some in-band debug functions. It also has a very limited set of uh, out-of-band uh, remote debug functions, um, but because of security issues, um, that's kept to a very, very minimum set. Um, this microcontroller also uh, provided some uh, cryptographic and security features, um, and it runs a, a closed thermal control loop. Um, and this is something we still do have today. Um, <clears throat> now, even though we offloaded some of the uh, management functions from the host. All of this is still running as part of the larger um, automated in-band um, uh, management system, that, uh, the all-day infrastructure that we had previously built up. Um, and so, uh, a bit about uh, what this infrastructure looks like. Um, so like I said, it's in-band, it's running over the, uh, the existing network. Um, it collects data at scale, and we collect uh, raw information, um, you know, raw uh, thermal values, um, power readings, um, and you know, we'll collect uh, uh, firmware versions, kernel versions, uptime, you know, you name it. And it's customizable, um, and the rate at which the information is collected is also um, uh, a knob that um, that the people that uh, the our SREs and and various groups can configure and we build dashboards around that. Um, so we collect all this raw information um, and then we have a, uh, a larger distributed management system that analyzes um, this data um, so that we can uh, over improve the overall health of the machines in the fleet. So it will do things like um, detect and um, mitigate and even predict failures um, it'll do anomaly detection. It helps with um, it helps with part management and machine management, um, and uh, and also for monitoring diagnosis. Uh, the data gets collected um, and it's stored. We generate various graphs. We can run various um, uh, machine learning algorithms on it, um, and it gets stored in a uh, time series database, so you can access the history of machines um, across the fleet. So uh, more recently, uh, we've been looking at introducing BMCs uh, into Google's platforms. Um, and this initially started um, with uh, the Google and Rackspace OCP server Zaius, um, since it's OCP and it's, it's running OpenBMC. 
Um, and then uh, you know, we saw how, how great it is that we can have access to a Linux environment and be able to use standard Linux tools, um, as well as uh, being able to monitor and manage and debug a server uh, independent of the host. Um, so we decided that we would, um, that we would continue and uh, add support for BMCs in future server deployments um, beyond Zaius. Um, so some of the, the, the challenge with this is, um, so we have this microcontroller solution and we have all this, uh, this you know, in-band management system. Uh, so we need to, one, we need to meet feature parity with the microcontroller solution, uh, provide the same features, and we also need to be able to plug essentially OpenBMC into this existing infrastructure. And so there's uh, certain incompatibilities that we have to work around or we have to figure out. Um, so uh, this is where I hope we will end up. Um, I'm kind of skipping ahead. This is where I want us to go, you know, five, ten years from now. Uh, what, uh, I, what people call agentless management. Um, the idea is, uh, is that, um, that the BMC will be the trusted component in the system and it handles all of the management uh, functions for the system and the host um, can run untrusted and it can, uh, it's, it can run any kind of workload. Um, but, all it, it, but its focus is solely on processing, serving, you know, whatever the function for that machine should be. And the management is handled by the BMC. Um, but um, the BMC needs access to uh, all the components in the system uh, in order to be able to do that. And today in some of our designs, that's, uh, that's not <coughs> true. Um, and I already mentioned we have a, uh, an in-band uh, management network. Uh, I would like us to, to move to a, uh, a virtual management network so we separate um, the management traffic out from the rest of the production traffic. Um, one, of the one of the benefits um, that I see for, for the, um, having this agentless management model um, is that uh, the BMC can, can potentially manage the resources, allocate resources to the host, or even disable access um, if, the, if it detects that the host is, uh, is some kind of a threat. Um, so, um, and uh, of course we need to improve the security model um, between the BMC and the host um, for that to work, uh, to work well. Um, but we also need to uh, look at the security between the BMC and the network. So this is sort of what's on the agenda for, for this year for us. Um, it changes uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, different priorities come up, but this is kind of what I'm hoping to stick with. Um, so uh, reliability is a, is a big focus for us right now. Um, like Intel, we also have our own uh, in internal repository which tracks upstream OpenBMC. Um, and we do find a lot of times, uh, especially when we do emerge from, from upstream, that we find a lot of bugs and regressions. Um, and part of the problem is that we're not, uh, we're not syncing frequently enough with upstream, but also there is a lack of, uh, a lack of test and test infrastructure, um, and we don't have confidence in the code that we're pulling in, that it's stable and, and, and functional for, for, for us. So that's something, an area that we are hoping to improve on. Um, and uh, of course, uh, you know, since we're not um, merging frequently enough with, uh, with upstream, uh, I want to define uh, better processes and tools for doing automated merging, um, builds that m build from upstream, merge with our own code, um, and, and release automation. Um, the key for a lot of this is not just being able to do it, but to do it in an automated fashion, and to do it quickly, and to do it frequently. Um, and I'm hoping to work with the upstream community to um, improve the testing and um, the tests and the builds um, so that we can have more confidence when we pull down something that it's already in a good state. And so we can make it, it makes it easier for us to track down if the problem is us or something that came from upstream. 
Um, I think James did a really good job of discussing security, but um, security is something that, um, I, so I have my own security team and you know, they've expressed concerns. We haven't done enough security, uh, security work around the BMC, the BMC image. It pulls in so many third party packages. Um, it, it, upstream OpenBMC, um, it gets the versions from Yocto, but that doesn't always have the most recent version, doesn't always have the security patches, and that's a big concern for us. So that's an area that we need uh, improvement on. Um, so we also want to do some core feature work. Um, the BMC already has you know, certain event in, in the logging infrastructure. Um, I need to figure out how we can export that off of the BMC um, using our, into our existing infrastructure. Um, and we may need you know, some help with upstream to add support uh, in order for us to do that. Um, there is a, a number of IPMI improvements, uh, including the IPMI refactor that I'm hoping my team will have a chance to work on. Um, Emily on my team is actually one of the IPMI maintainers. I know, she's somewhere in here, <laughs> hiding. Oh, there she is. <laughs> um, and uh, firmware updates. Uh, so OpenBMC has, a, 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 we've been working on a firmware update mechanism. Um, but because of this, uh, this in-band management system that we have, we actually do in-band uh, in uh, firmware updates, which is different from what everyone else does. Um, so you know, we're hoping to uh, share some of that with the upstream community. Um, and there's also been a lot of discussion about runtime platform configurations on the mailing list. I don't know if anyone has read about that. Um, this actually aligns well with uh, an, in, uh, an internal effort that we have that's also uh, looking to um, to consolidate um, sources of information and, uh, and essentially create a, a, a platform configuration for our server projects you know, beyond the BMC. Um, and so these are kind of the core features that we want to work on this year. I'm hoping to do some of the, the steps, to, taking some steps towards the agentless management, um, such as uh, uh, investigating how we'll use MCTP. Um, and improving the, the security model between the BMC and the, uh, and the network interface. Um, and a big one is the uh, remote debugging features. Right now we can't access the BMC, we're not allowed to. Um, there's, you know, for security reasons. Um, and so working with the security teams on uh, improving uh, security to a point where they feel comfortable allowing us to open up uh, access to certain parts of the system from the BMC. Um, so, uh, just my contact information, so if you have any questions, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy.